What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, over the weekend, controversy broke out around an upcoming Nintendo title when a listing went live a bit early showing some of the pricing and it didn't go over very well online. We'll talk about that though here today. Also, we are gonna be taking a look at a very impressive release for the 3DS that's breathing a bit more life into one of Nintendo's more unique systems from the past. And then also we have a new report that's mentioning an Xbox console release coming up here in just a couple of months, but is it the new hardware that people are really asking for? Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members get Newswave early and ad free. If you wanna learn more about that, check the join button down below this video. And we're gonna start today with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So when this game came out, of course, didn't get the best reception online with Metacritic scores in the low 80 or low 60s at best. And in fact, on SteamDB, you typically see the game coming in at less than a thousand people playing at any given time. And now it appears that WB is also, well, saying what we all basically know. We can see this posted up. This is over on VGC who transcribed it. And it's from the chief financial officer there, Gunnar uh, Wind Windenfels who says, we are lapping the release of Hogwarts Legacy in February last year, which of course we, we know did very, very well. They said, which saw the largest portion of its very positive financial impact in the first quarter. This year, Suicide Squad is one of our key video game releases in 2024, has fallen short of our expectations since its release earlier in the quarter, setting our games business up for a tough year over year comp in Q1. Yeah, I, I don't think Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is gonna be able to live up to this kind of sales numbers we saw Hogwarts Legacy put up last year, which by the way, was the best selling game of the year, especially in the US, like outright. So Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, unfortunately for Rocksteady specifically, uh, is even like below expectations they probably had set just for that game, not even putting it next to Hogwarts Legacy. So I don't really know what happens from here with this game because apparently, we're gonna see Rocksteady continue to support this title for a little while as they're talking about more content and updates for it. Is it worth continuing along with this game for another year or two? Or should Rocksteady look towards something else to get maybe back on track? I think it'd be cool for them to go off and do maybe a Batman Beyond style game. I, that'd be really fun, but who knows what the future holds for Rocksteady at this point, especially if they're being weighed down by Suicide Squad for the foreseeable future. Oh, and speaking of another struggling game, we have Skull and Bones from Ubisoft, which also released, and the review's not great for that game either. And in fact, it appears things are even more dire for this title when it comes to just number of people playing it, which we can see this post up by Insider Gaming, who says, speaking with sources, the game currently has around 850,000 players total at the time of writing, which includes those who have opted to play the game with the eight hour free trial provided by Ubisoft. They do mention that at the time of at the time of writing here, that players are at least fairly engaged with the average player playing between three and four hours, but they eventually have to pay up, right? They have to convert to paid players, which means you have to buy the $70 game. Is Skull and Bones able to do that? Well, we'll see, but just the fact that only 850,000 people have it even gotten into the game somewhat with free trials included, not great for Ubisoft's quadruple A game. I, we figured this wasn't going to be a high performer for Ubisoft, but not even like touching a million for a game like this with the length of time in development and probably the cost behind it is not looking good for this one for Ubisoft. Oh, and we did get our first real look at Age of Mythology Retold, which is like a remaster, remake, or just like reimagining completely the definitive edition of Age of Mythology from back in like 2002, 2003. It was a spinoff of Age of Empires and it was a really fun game back then, so I, I might keep an eye on this one, even though I'm not really into RTS games like I used to be back then with things like Age of Empires. But this is coming out 2024. It's coming to Xbox and PC, so we'll hit consoles. And uh, it's going to be on Game Pass. So really, really cool stuff there. The video did show off some gameplay and some different elements to it. So I recommend checking it out if you're looking forward to this one. Today's video is sponsored by Atlas and their latest game, Unicorn Overlord. Experience a nostalgia-infused epic strategy RPG adventure with gorgeous modern 2D aesthetics in this new title from Vanillaware. Forge alliances, liberate kingdoms, and explore an 
expansive world where you test your real-time strategy skills, cultivating a grand army with over 60 unique characters, all while performing heroic deeds to grow your renown throughout five different nations. Navigate the battlefield as the commander and make critical decisions as real-time battles play out in front of you. Unicorn Overlord pays homage to classic 16 and 32-bit strategy RPG gameplay, totaling 40 to 50 hours. A demo is available right now and progress will carry over to the full game. Fight against fate and embark on a royal adventure to regain your reign alongside trustworthy allies when Unicorn Overlord launches on March 8th for Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series X, S, PlayStation 5, and digitally on the PlayStation 4, with pre-orders available now. Thanks again to Atlas and Unicorn Overlord for sponsoring today's video. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with some controversy to hit Nintendo's upcoming title, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which I do wonder if that's a placeholder or if that's just what they're calling it, I, I guess, because a listing went live on GameStop, which we can see the tweet here mentioned by Wario64, with the title coming in at $59.99, $60. It's up for pre-order now, and in fact, if you go to the page, I mean, it just has the title card there for it at 60 bucks. Release date still to be determined. It's supposed to be coming out summer, so it could be coming up in the next, like, three or four months, I, I guess. Nintendo likes to play around with some of those release windows, so it, who really knows? But the fact that it's coming in at $60 caught a lot of people off guard, I will say, because the reaction online wasn't great to this one, because it... I mean, it just looks overpriced, it does, because it is, of course, based off of the, the 3DS game, Dark Moon, that came out at $40 and can really be found online pretty easily for 13 14 15 bucks, really. So, looking at that, it being a remastered, really, version of that game, going up $20, yeah, I understand why people are going to look at that and go, well, okay, that feels like too much money, but the thing I've noticed with Luigi's Mansion, Nintendo also has noticed this, it's been getting more and more popular. Like they've gone, they've only gone up in terms of sales for this uh, this series. So starting on the GameCube was like three and a half million. Then on the 3DS was like six and a half million. And now Luigi's Mansion 3 being the latest one on the Switch, 13 million copies. I think people still get surprised when they hear just how many copies the most recent version sold. So Nintendo looking at this thinking, oh, could we maybe get 5 million out of a remaster of this 3DS version? and charge 60 bucks for it? Well, if that's the case, then, you know, they're gonna rake in more money than they did on the 3DS, uh, what, a decade ago. I think the biggest point people have here with this is it feels very inconsistent with how Nintendo treats a lot of these remasters or even remakes. So, for example, Metroid Prime Remastered, that was $40, and that was a really good version of Metroid Prime, whereas now we see Luigi's Mansion 2 HD be $60. That Paper Mario that's coming up, I feel like that'll also be a full 60. Although, that's a remake and there could be more content there. In fact, I'm kind of thinking there will be. But who knows, maybe with Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, there's more content there as well. That's the big thing is this is a listing that's going up on GameStop. It's not been confirmed by Nintendo yet, although I am leaning towards it being $60 now after seeing this. But we don't necessarily know everything about this game as Nintendo's mostly just revealed that title card and a pretty quick trailer. So we'll see, I think, as we go along. I'm still thinking we'll have some other direct event before what people are anticipating to be a summer reveal for their new system. And maybe Luigi's Mansion is in there to kind of set up the summer for Nintendo. And they go over some extra features or added content to hopefully warrant that full price uh, tag, so we'll see. Next up, let's talk about a really impressive release for the 3DS, which we can see this posted up. This is over on X, and this was posted by Flugel, says just released Red Viper, a Virtual Boy emulator that runs on the 3DS. And the thing that's really impressive about this is that the 3D works. So obviously we know the Virtual Boy, very, very unique system for a Nintendo, not necessarily in a good way as it did not work out for them at all, but it's a kind of an experience you can't really get anywhere else. I know there was work to try to get it into like VR and I could see that working then, but in terms of the, the overall 3D kind of experience you get from it, you're not gonna have that on a standard computer monitor or a TV, but the 3DS screen makes a lot of sense. Now, if you go over to the GitHub, they do go over some of the features here, which includes all officially licensed games being playable at full speed, even on the original 3DS. So. I like, for example, I have a new 3DS that I'm gonna load this on, I believe. Uh, that That is just faster than the original one, but they got it to work there, which is 
pretty impressive. And in fact, it appears a lot of work went into this where they say it used a dynamic recompiler with busy weight detection and a hardware accelerated renderer to achieve high performance on the 3DS limited hardware. Now, along with 3D support, you have game saves that are supported. You can map either the A and B buttons or the right D-pad to the the face buttons, that new 3DS C stick, it's also supported, which would technically help out then obviously with the, the kind of the, the 2D pad approach. And you can configure uh, the face button mapping and configure the color filter. So yes, you can change the color of the screen. I saw some people asking about that because obviously the, the wireframe red doesn't exactly do it for everyone. So you have options, there you go. And they do say it also supports the Circle Pad Pro. So they kind of thought of everything here. Of course, you will need to use a, a modded 3DS for this as it is an emulator that you would either install on the home screen or load in a homebrew browser. But I mean, the 3DS has been hacked all over the place. It's pretty easy to do. And there's no eShop anyway. So what's really stopping most people from, I assume at least trying it at some point. But either way, this is a really cool thing to see happen. And I, I do want to go ahead and check this out myself. I'll download it play a few of the games on there, see how the 3D support is. And if people are interested, maybe I'll do a separate video or a YouTube short, just kind of going over some of my quick thoughts on it. Next up, let's talk about a new report that appears to point towards a new Xbox console coming out over the summer. Now we can see this is posted up by Xputer, I believe it's pronounced. Anyway, they have the story highlights at the top that makes this very easy, but Microsoft is planning to release a digital Xbox Series X somewhere between June and July this year. So I mean, we're not far off then, it'd be in like four months or so. The black color of the existing console will be swapped with white and it'll be all digital. And the price of the digital Xbox Series X is unknown, but it could be lower than the current model. Now they seem to cite some promotional footage that they've been privy to, but we, we all saw that slide that got out there during the FTC trial uh, with Microsoft and that Xbox Series X Brooklyn was there and it was set to come out later on this year. And I will admit the summer release seems kind of strange, but it would play into their June showcase. And Microsoft's done this before where they would reveal a new system and then maybe have like a slim system for their other, like their older generation. They did that with the Xbox 360 and Xbox One. MVG pointed this out to me again over on the, the Spawncast where they released it like the next day. It was just at retailers or you order it on their website. I don't know if they do the similar thing here, but we don't really go into stores and buy consoles anymore anyway. Like I haven't seen an Xbox Series X or a PS5 in stores consistently yet. You occasionally see one or two here if you walk through a Target, but like it's not the old days where you'd walk in and there'd be like shelves of these things and it's easily attainable. So maybe that's the case where they announce it it's live and you just go on their website and buy it. But obviously the big thing here that people are noticing is it would be a discless or an all digital or an adorably all digital Xbox Series X console. And is that what people really want? Because last generation, Microsoft did the Xbox One S all digital, the Xbox One sad, and we just kind of made fun of it the whole time, right? It didn't make a lot of sense why I'd go with that as opposed to just the, the full Xbox One S. The price difference wasn't really that noticeable for removing the ultra high def Blu-ray player out of that system. In this case, if they have the price lower, maybe that'll be like $100 lower or if they up the internal storage to two terabytes and they do things like they showcase with that slide with better Wi-Fi, a new Southbridge chip and other features. I mean, for me, I think I'm good with my Xbox Series X that has the disk drive, but I have wondered what that physical digital split is currently on the Xbox ecosystem. I'm sure Microsoft sees the numbers themselves and I wouldn't be shocked if it's like 85 digital, 15 physical and continuing to climb in favor of digital. And maybe they're thinking we can get out in front of the next generation and get people even more invested in the digital side of things. So it's not a big deal when our next system just does not have a disk drive at all. So uh, whew, interesting stuff here. I, I'm not 100% sure this is going to be a thing as Xputer appears to be, despite it being promotional footage, because the summer release, the idea of this uh, lining up with their, their FTC slides so well, even though Phil Spencer said plans changed, a, a, a kernel of doubt there, but it, it is definitely possible. So we'll keep an eye out for maybe more reports around an all digital Xbox Series X later this year. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the follow-up or the sequel to one of the most popular Switch accessories last year, which was the Nitro Deck. It was the grip that you'd slide your Switch into and it, it made it pretty much uniform and it was fairly comfortable minus the right stick being a little too low, I feel like. However, they've now come back to the table after listening to some of those reviews and criticisms and we now have the Nitro Deck Plus, which you can see here. 
And yes, it's now effectively turned the Switch into a Wii U tablet, which, uh, Hey, if people like the sticks at the top, that's really what it's going to look like anyway. But with the full trailer here, they also released some of the new features, which they do have the swappable stick tops. They have a better rumble, they mentioned, as well as adjustable vibration feedback. All that's done through Bluetooth, which is built into this grip that you can use your phone and their application and customize different elements to it. They also mentioned an easy eject system. Thank you, because that was something that I didn't really like too much, having to push hard on the screen to pop it out of that Nitro Deck grip. And they also mentioned be able to dock it with uh, like a USB-C to HDMI cable. I have to see how that works in practice, but it is, uh, it is releasing late April, 2024. So a couple of months from now at the price of $69.99, which seems very, very specific and purposeful. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably check one of these out just to, I, I did like the Nitro Deck itself. Again, minus the issue with the right stick, but if this is something that people prefer having the stick at the top, I'll check it out again and see if some of these other features also make it worth upgrading from there. But late April, 2024, uh, we'll, we'll see then. And before we go to the comments of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked if Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is priced at $60, are you picking it up? 49% say, no, I'm not interested. 43% say later on, say, hey, 9% are going all in there. ASAP picking it up. Yeah, this is one I wouldn't be shocked goes on sale. Luigi's Mansion 3 has been on sale a bunch of times as well. I feel like... Luigi's Mansion 2 HD coming in at $40, I think would have been much more acceptable. People were like, okay, yeah, that's even the same price as the, the 3DS. And it's not as inconsistent as, okay, Metroid Prime remaster is 40, but this is 60. If they're both 40, it's like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. But who knows, next generation, when Nintendo goes to 70, this would make more sense then for them, right? Oh, it's $10 less. Unless the the, the next remaster they do is just a, a full on $70. It's Nintendo, so... It wouldn't really shock me. And we'll finish up with the comments of the day, which we'll start with this one here. This is from Shadow who says, I just realized that the FF7 remake came out almost four years ago. It really doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Yeah, that that is interesting. I, I didn't really think about it too much till we were talking about it on the Spawncast. I was like, wow, it really has been uh, just about four years since that came out. And I was starting to wonder, does that mean that they'll be able to get the final part of this trilogy for the remake series in this generation? Will they be able to release it in 2028 ahead of the PS6 and just ni like nicely bookend it so we have all three available on the PS5? Or will this take another five years to get the final one done? And it's a PS6 game and this whole thing spans like three generations. I hope they're able to get it done and it appears that as they've been working on it, they're reusing assets and that sort of thing. And maybe going from this one, which is more open world, to the final will make it even easier. But who knows? It's uh, I, I got to play through this one to see just how crazy Nomura gets at the end. And we'll finish up with the member comment here. This is from uh, Kayo Jose Maza Huzubek5827. Hey, you're a member? I'm going to take a shot at it. They say, having never played a Final Fantasy game before, this Rebirth really makes me want to try it out. So the issue here is Rebirth obviously is, is created in the idea that you've played Remake and that's made in the belief that you've played the original Final Fantasy VII. So this is probably one of the worst ones you can pick up right away, having never played a Final Fantasy game. A more recent one from the Final Fantasy series that I would recommend starting out with, because I also noticed your other comment was about uh, not really being as into JRPGs, maybe the turn-based mechanics. Final Fantasy XVI, more of an action game overall, but it still does have kind of that, that feeling and sense of Final Fantasy in that medieval, like, fantasy sort of world. So, yeah, that's the one I'd recommend starting out if you're more into the action kind of stuff. And, uh, hey, technically you could work back to Final Fantasy VII and then kind of come up to Remake and Rebirth, but... Try out 16, see what you think about just the overall Final Fantasy universe, and then kind of go from there. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. What well, is Luigi's Mansion 2 HD? How do you feel about the $60 price tag for that one? And then the Virtual Boy being emulated completely on the 3DS, even using the 3D functionality. And then the Xbox Series X getting an all-digital system this summer. Would you be interested in picking one of those up? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.